NBC 15 News at 11 starts now. Now at 11, we now know the name of the Cottage Grove man accused of brutally attacking his wife with a hammer. Plus, a frozen custard stand in Milwaukee is being called racist for how they make their customers order their treats. And one teacher serving up one of the best lessons for their students. New at 11, a Janesville high school is under a soft lockdown after pepper spray was used by a student. Good morning and hello. I'm Christine Belport. Amy Flugsa is on assignment. Craig High School has been under lockdown since 9 this morning. The school says they believe a student used the pepper spray during a passing period. It's not known why. Multiple students are being treated for pepper spray exposure and their parents have been notified. Now, the school will stay under lockdown to make sure it doesn't affect anyone else. And we now have the name of the Cottage Grove man accused of attacking his wife with a hammer. 31-year-old Randy Fry is expected to have an initial appearance today from his hospital bed. Police say he hit his 31-year-old wife in the head with a hammer before threatening to kill himself earlier this month. Police say Fry was found inside their Chateau Drive home with self-inflicted knife injuries. He's been recovering in the hospital. Fry's expected to face multiple charges, including attempted homicide. A central Wisconsin mother driving a minivan that crashed and killed her two young daughters had been cited before for not buckling them into their car seats. That's according to court records. 23-year-old Aurelia Perez Amador is facing child neglect charges for the April crash that killed her four and five year old girls. She lost control on ice in Clark County and hit a tree. She is also facing charges of driving without a valid license. A Madison man is facing charges after deputies say they found a stolen pistol and hundreds of dollars in stolen clothes. 26 year old Kelsey Nelson was pulled over on Algama Street just after 3.30 this morning because his car did not have a license plate. The deputy smelled marijuana and searched the vehicle. No drugs were found, but nearly $2,000 worth of stolen jeans and a loaded gun stolen from Columbia, Georgia were found. Nelson is facing multiple charges, including carrying a concealed weapon. So next week is the unofficial kickoff to summer with Memorial Day weekend and let's not forget Brock Fest. The warmer weather is certainly such a welcome change. Look at this. Oh, we haven't seen this in so long. Many are out at outdoor cafes around the Capitol enjoying this fabulous day. Meteorologist A.J. Waterman joins us now with more on how long we can expect this to stick around because let's face it, we have waited so long for it. I think that's why people don't know it's even Memorial Day weekend next weekend because right. it just hasn't been warm at all. Well, we have a gorgeous stretch of weather on our hands at least through the weekend, and then it looks like we're going to stick to those milder temperatures for some time. Right now, 65 degrees outside, so we are on the warmer side to start things out, and I think we'll end in the 70s today with plenty of sunshine in place. Dry conditions also, winds are very calm. That's allowing those temperatures to warm up. You can see the dew points rather dry out there, air, indicating a dry air mass, only 40 degrees right now. Temperatures outside in the 60s, most locations actually getting into the upper 60s right now will continue to warm things heading on into this afternoon, but clear sunny skies out there, not even a cloud showing up. All You have to look all the way to Nebraska to see the clouds. So it looks like we're going to be seeing plenty of sunshine this afternoon, plenty of sunshine in the forecast. Also, temperatures getting up into the 70s, like I was talking about. We'll stick to the 70s likely this weekend and maybe a few 80s on the board as we get into next week. I'll have the details on that coming up in just about 10 minutes. Christine. Oh, that just looks great. AJ, thank you so much. In other news of our Thursday morning, parts of the Dane County Jail will be shut down for safety reasons. The city county building's sixth and seventh floors were found to be unsafe due to the aging structure. The walls are deteriorating and locks are freezing up. Also, more than half of the nearly 400 cells are just too far from any evacuation route. Sheriff Dave Mahoney says it comes down to safety for the inmates and his staff. They are our neighbors, and every one of us should be concerned about the fact that, as sheriff, I'm not sure I can keep them safe. So the next step is to see whether they want to expand in an existing building or if they need to build a new facility. A committee voted for consultants to develop at least two options to remodel the public safety building portion of the jail. 
A frozen custard stand in Milwaukee is under fire for its English only policy. A Spanish speaking customer reportedly tried to order in Spanish at Leon's frozen custard, but a Spanish speaking employee told the customer allegedly they could only take orders in English. The owner said the policy has been in place for more than a decade and that no customers have ever been turned away. But many groups say the policy violates federal labor law and the policies they are calling for a government investigation because of them. Well, here's a nice switch in gears. How about this? Some lucky Wisconsin students will get to talk to someone who's out of this world today. Astronaut Jeff Williams is speaking to students from the International Space Station this morning. Students live in Winter, Wisconsin, which is Williams' hometown. Winter is just north of Eau Claire in Sawyer County. Williams is one of six astronauts currently living at the space station. A local sixth grader is one of the best spellers in Wisconsin and will take his talent to the national level. Martius Isaac Batista is at Edgewood Campus School. He's going to be competing in the Scripps National Spelling Bee next week. He'll also be joined by Veronica Govis. She's a Menominee Falls seventh grader. If they make it to the finals, they will then compete for the first place title next Thursday. And good luck. How about this for some students? Some Michigan students are learning lifelong lessons. They're helping to serve food, do dishes, take orders, and seat customers at a local restaurant. I've been helping. We were being waitressing. Turn the water pitcher. We are washing the dishes and making salads. Oh, they're washing the dishes and making salads. Well, their teacher owns the restaurant, and you know, she said the experience was meant just to teach students about customer service, good work ethic, and of course, good manners.